Ever get that feeling? Like something deep inside you is whispering, tugging you back into the past. Oh, absolutely. We're diving into past lives today, but with a twist. We're exploring the idea that these past lives, they're not just your story, they're your soul's story. See, that's what I find so fascinating about this whole perspective. It really challenges the typical reincarnation story, you know? It's less about us digging up memories of past lives as Cleopatra or a knight or something. It's bigger than that. Right. It's not just about us. It's about tapping into this well of experience that our soul carries. And that can be pretty profound when you really think about it. And to help us unpack all of this, we're checking out a clip from, this is a YouTube channel. It's called Spiritual Engineering and Wizardry. Tashi title. Yeah. And don't let the name throw you off. They get into some really interesting concepts. Like one of the things the speaker says is your past lives aren't really yours, at least not in the way we usually think about it. They say those past lives belong to your soul. So what do you make of that? Well, it's definitely a different way of looking at things. The speaker actually uses this analogy. They say your soul is like a vast ocean. Okay. Right. And each lifetime, just a wave on the surface of that ocean. So the wave, that's your individual life. It's temporary. Right. It comes and goes. Exactly. But the ocean, the ocean is eternal. That's your soul. So are you saying that when we usually think about reincarnation, we're so busy focusing on the wave crashing on the shore that we're missing the enormity of the entire ocean? That's a great way to put it, because this perspective, it suggests that the you that gets reborn, it isn't really your ego, you know? Not the personality that we're walking around with right now. Exactly. It's not so much that as it is your soul, and that soul is gathering experiences across all these different lifetimes. Okay. I'm with you so far. But if these past lives are more like echoes of what our soul has experienced, then why even bother with past life regression? What's the point if it's not about digging up secrets about me in a past life? That is where things get really interesting, because the speaker argues that the real power of past life regression, the real magic of it, is in its ability to create this bridge. A bridge. A bridge between your current self and your soul. Okay, so it's less about who was I and more about connecting to this deeper eternal part of ourselves that... Honestly, we may not even be fully aware of. Precisely. It's like we can download or maybe even remember the essence of our soul, who we really are, and bring that into our current life. So you're saying if we're struggling with a decision or feeling lost, and then all of a sudden we get this sense of clarity, this inner knowing that comes out of nowhere. Is that what you're talking about? That's the kind of connection we're talking about. It's like a remembering. Okay, that's interesting. But if our egos can't directly access those past lives, how do we even begin to tap into them? It's like we're trying to send a postcard to a wave that's already crashed on the shore. Well, the speaker is very clear about this. Mm -hmm. We can only access those past life experiences by going through the soul. The ego, with its limited view of things, has to kind of take a step back and allow the soul to be the guide. So we're talking about shifting our awareness from the wave to the ocean. Yes. That's a pretty big shift. How do we even begin to do that? That's where past life regression comes in. Because yeah. each regression, the speaker says, it strengthens the connection between you right now and your soul. So it's like building a bridge plank by plank until right. that connection is strong enough to hold all those past experiences. Exactly. And then what happens? What's on the other side of that bridge? Well, that's where the speaker's ideas about spiritual ripening come into play. But we'll get into that right after this. Okay, so we're building that bridge, getting braver about exploring what our soul has to show us. But what happens next? What's waiting for us on the other side? Well, that's where this idea of spiritual ripening comes in, at least according to the speaker. They suggest that as we connect with our soul through past life regression, we start to, it's like we're shedding stuff. You know, letting go of emotional baggage, those limiting beliefs that we've been carrying around, stuff that might be holding us back in this life. Oh, I like that. So less baggage, more freedom to be who we really are. It's got to be appealing to a lot of people, right? Right. And the speaker's point is, it's like those past experiences, all those unresolved emotions and patterns, they kind of loosen their grip on us. Okay, but what does that look like in real life, though? Give me some examples. Sure. So imagine, like, finally letting go of that self-doubt you had since you were a kid or that fear of failure that's kept you stuck in the same place. The speaker is suggesting that by facing these issues, not just as personal quirks, but as echoes of the soul's journey, we can actually change things in the here and now. So it's not just about 
uncovering exciting details about our past lives. It's about using that information to heal and grow in this life. Exactly. And it goes even deeper than that. Remember that tapestry analogy, right? Each life adds a thread. Yeah. Each life adds a thread, a color to the bigger picture of our soul. Mm, right. So past life regression in this context, it helps us see the entire tapestry, not just this tiny little thread of our current life. I love that. Zooming out to see the full picture. That's a powerful image. It is. And that bigger perspective it can be incredibly freeing because when yeah. we begin to see that we're not just this isolated ego limited by time, but rather this eternal soul on this incredible journey, it changes our whole perspective. It makes those everyday problems feel smaller. Exactly. Our fears, our insecurities, even our accomplishments, they all take on a whole new meaning. It's interesting. The speaker in this clip is really passionate about everyone experiencing this kind of shift, yep. almost like they're begging people to try past life regression. Mm. Why do you think that is? Well, to me, it's compelling how they present past life regression, not as just this fun way to explore history, but as a real tool for growth, for personal and spiritual development. Mm -hmm. So it's not just an esoteric concept. It's a doorway to something more. Exactly. It's like they've seen the full tapestry and they're desperate to share that view. Yes. And what's interesting is this idea of connecting with something bigger than ourselves, recognizing that our true self is eternal. That's not unique to this speaker or this video. This is a theme that pops up in spiritual and philosophical traditions all over the world. So even though spiritual engineering and wizardry might have a different approach, they're tapping into something very human, that desire to figure out who we really are, why we're here. Exactly. And by presenting past lives as part of the soul's journey, they're offering a new way to think about it all, a fresh perspective, one that might really resonate with people who might have thought reincarnation was, you know, too out there. It's almost like a weight off your shoulders, you know. Oh, I know what you mean. When you start to think about past lives as belonging to the soul, it's not so much about did I mess up in a past life. It becomes what can I learn from all of this, from everything my soul has gone through. It's definitely a kinder way to look at it. Instead of judging those past selves, you can be curious about them, grateful for whatever wisdom they're carrying. And I bet that's really helpful for someone who's new to this whole idea of reincarnation. Yeah. Or maybe they're a little freaked out by it. Oh, absolutely. Because when you focus on the soul's journey, you don't get so bogged down in the details of each past life, right? So in that way, it makes reincarnation much more approachable, I think. It's less about believing in something specific and more about, like, cracking open your own potential, yeah. seeing what's there. It's like, hey, you don't need to have all the answers. Right. You don't even have to buy into the whole past lives thing to see what might be hiding in your own soul. Exactly. Just open yourself to the possibility, the possibility that there's more to life than we realize. And maybe more to us. Yes. And that by tapping into that deeper part of ourselves, we can have a richer experience in this life. It's a pretty powerful idea when you get right down to it, that we aren't just these separate beings, you know, bound by time, but that we're these eternal souls on a journey. And that journey yeah. is full of growth. Yes. Well, I know I've got some thinking to do. <laughs> it's amazing how one new perspective can completely change the way you see something, even something as big as reincarnation. It really makes you think, doesn't it? If our souls really do carry the memories of all those past lives, all those different experiences, what can we learn from that? What does it mean for us, for our purpose in this life? It's definitely something to think about. Maybe next time you feel that pull towards the past, you'll listen a little closer, see what comes up. Yeah, yeah. Pay attention to those whispers. Well, that's it for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure.